definitely a great exercise. In my opinion, one of the best compound movements for triceps. It's crazy. I haven't done it in so long. Like I've never really seen anyone do them as of late. It's just something that's not become as popular. Cause that was an exercise you used to do all the time. Coach Greg, and I'm here with Eric Janicki. I said his name right. You and did. we're going over the best exercises to do for your body parts. We're giving them A, B, C, D, or F ratings. And so stay tuned. We are going to have different opinions. Am I right? Is he right? We'll let you decide. You ready? Let's do this. Let's get started. Tricep time. Try. I've got one tricep that doesn't work, one that works great. So we, should, we so we should probably not listen to Greg, but we're going to have him on the video. Don't anymore. race bikes and crash. <laughs> That's what you don't want to do. All right, let's hop into this. So we're going to start with barbell skull crushers. I love the skull crushes, but I can't do them anymore because it hurts my elbow. And so over my lifetime, I've done them hundreds of times, probably thousands of times. I love the exercise. I love what it, how it does. It makes me feel. Um, I like to superset from here, then off the chest. So it allows me to go past failure. I think it's a great exercise, but I can't do it. I'm giving it a B. I'm going to give the skull crusher, the barbell skull crusher, a D. And oh, oh, only a D. A D, yeah. Tough rating. Yeah, I think See that- why. Let's hear why. So just from a mechanical perspective, the barbell skull, skull crusher is extremely hard on your elbow joint. It's just that vector of force. Um, and a lot of times it has to be done with a heavier weight, which is inevitably going to cause even more pressure. Um, the other reason is it's mostly focusing on the long head of the triceps. So we're going to be here focusing on this head, whereas a lot of other movement patterns, they target both. And a lot of times, actually, the more important for aesthetics is actually that short head, um, just because of the fact that it's, it's a bigger muscle. And also it's just like going to be more important for like aesthetics on stage. So long head exercise should only be a small part of your focus actually on a tricep day. So that'd be overhead extensions, rope overhead, skull crushers. Whereas you should be more focused on more of the compounds, push downs, heavier push downs, dips, things that are going to hit both heads of the triceps and actually give you that more bang for your buck in terms of volumization. So for those reasons, D is good. Now, when you do them, do you ever tried uh, like an incline for the skull crusher? Or, and also another part of the question, do you go behind the head or literally to the skull? If we're going behind the head, I'm going to increase the grade to a C or C plus because now we're maximizing range of motion and we're taking a little bit of pressure out of that elbow joint because here it's so much pressure. We're only going right down to the forehead. Now we drop it back here. We're getting more stretch, more of that flexion in the elbow and then less of that pressure actually on the elbow joint itself so i think it's a better exercise when done on an incline you move yourself up the bench and actually let the bar track behind you yeah well i do my uh my skull crushers I always go to the back of the head because i just didn't want to crush my head i, I go to failure and i'm like if i can't get it, i don't want it there and also a slight incline a little bit of better stretch and then off the chest to pump it up i really like that combo but i can't do it anymore yeah so i'd say if you're doing it well with good form and going behind the head and getting more stretch, I think this exercise could actually be argued to be like a C plus B minus. Still, you're hitting still more, not great. Still hitting more of the long head, which is not going to be as effective for growth as an exercise that hits both heads of the tricep and specifically more of that short head. So, um, still for that reason, we're going to rate it anywhere for me between like a D and a you know C plus. Okay, let's go dumbbell overhead extensions. So this is going to be more <laughs> upright. I hate this. I can't get anything from it. I'm giving it a D from performance, from trying it. I can't keep my arm in place. I can't even lift the light weight with it. I tried it as a child. I couldn't, as a child, I started doing them when I was 10. Greg, hated Greg it. Greg was doing good at it. overhead extensions when he was four. <laughs> 10 years old, literally. And I've never enjoyed it. I never got a good pump from it. I give it a D. I mean, I, it feels like it should be working the muscle, but I just don't get anything out of it. I'm going to give dumbbell overhead extensions a C uh, for efficacy for building up your triceps. Uh, same reason as last exercise. It's not it's hitting mostly the long head, which I don't think as as important as the exercise that hits both or mostly short head of the tricep just for size increases. Um, the thing I do like about it ergonomically, I think it's a little better than a barbell because bar is going to set your hands here. Whereas with the dumbbell, you can kind of wrap your hands around and tuck the elbows more easily. Um, and it takes a little pressure off the elbow joint as well. I think that it's a lot about how you set this exercise up. I don't like these completely upright. So here it's going to put a lot of pressure on your neck because you have to, if you're on a seated military and you're trying to reach behind yourself and 
tucking your chin down. Um, it's a lot of pressure on your neck, on your spine. Whereas if you can go on an incline, and actually lean back and actually like look back and go behind you like that, it's going to take pressure off your neck as you reach behind yourself. The, at that variant, you'll see it on my channel. And I'm going to push this up to like a B, B plus. Um, if you're doing it with a little bit more range of motion, focusing on that stretch made at birch fee, slow negatives. And so for me, whether I'm doing one arm at a time or two arms, I hate them both. I don't like them. Not saying not to try it. Remember, try everything. Find what works best for you. These are just exercises I don't like. I don't, they're not valuable to me. I wouldn't do them personally. Okay. Let's go cable rope push downs, and you can let us know what you feel like the best grip is, but just like a push down from a cable. Now, personally, I like the V-bar better than the rope, not saying that it's a better exercise, but my advice to anyone is to experiment with the machine or the, sorry, the, the attachment that's best for you. I love the exercise. It's easy to do. You can do partial reps. You can go to failure. You can do a drop set very quickly. It's safe. People get it on day one. It's not something hard to learn. I'm giving it an A. Great exercise. Yep, I'm giving a, a, a cable push down for triceps at A, like A plus. I think there's so many different attachments you can use. I personally actually like the V grip the most as well as Greg. What the reason is it allows me to almost push in as much as I'm pushing down, and that allows me a ton of leverage over the weight. And I think that's the most underutilized thing when it comes to tricep pushdowns is that leverage over the weight. So a lot of people do tricep pushdowns standing straight up. I argue that's not the most effective way because then you're going to have to pull back as much as you're pushing down. That's going to incorporate a lot of rear delt. Now, if I match that vector of force and use my body weight as leverage, and then I push down and through and keep that weight over it. Now I'm taking the rear delt out of the exercise. I'm able to get a really good hold at the bottom of the rep, really good negative. And then I'm able to stretch more at the top. I'm going to tuck my elbows into the sides and I'm going to reach as high as I can without moving the elbows. That's going to get a lot of flexion in the elbow. Like we talked about for the same thing with quads, the more flexion we can get in the joint, in this case, the elbow for triceps, the more stretch we're going to get and the more hypertrophy we're going to get even at lesser weights. So for me, it's like a no brainer, a plus exercise. And so I think, I think I, uh, I noticed people doing it wrong is they're not getting the full range of motion we're seeing come up. People are just trying to Eagle lift. They're only going to here and just kind of slamming it down real quick. You want to get a full range of motion. And he said, you want to lean slightly forward. I do believe in that as well. If you're standing completely upright, you're not going to get as much out of it. And at the same time, don't cheat so much that you're bending over at 45. Like you're, some people really bend too far and they're just slamming Eagle weights or using the stack. Take your time with this exercise. There's no reason to, to speed it up. Pause at the bottom. Go slow. Really feel it. You know, mind muscle connection and go for it. It's an A. It's an A. Yeah, I think the last quick point I'll make about this is don't lose contraction in the tricep. So when you come up at the top, even when you're stretching, don't let the elbow come forward. Because I see so many people do their tricep pushdowns when they let their elbow come up. Look how much I lose. I lose all tension in the tricep. Now I'm pinned back here. That tricep is engaged even in that top position where I'm getting the most stretch. So really pin those elbows down and back. If you need to get a little momentum at the end of the set when you're close to failure, take it from the hips, not from the elbow. So lift up a little bit and then drive through uh, from the hip and don't take it up here because you're going to lose all that contraction. Sometimes tricep. I actually go on the heel. I yep. go up on my toes to get a bit of swing without trying to do this because yep. a lot of people just yep. swing it up and slam it down. Now, I you're just, doing, now you're doing a pullover for lots of that point. Exactly. I'll just go up on my toes a little bit, you know, at the last couple reps just to get that body English to allow the few more reps. And I find it a great exercise. And if you don't want to do it, you want to be completely strict. so easy to drop the peg real quick. And then three seconds later, you're going, you're going again. 100%. All right. So the next exercise we have on our list is bench dips. So this is exercise just to clarify it's not the dips where you grab the bar this is where you have your hands behind you on a bench you put your feet out either elevated on a box or on the floor you can use weight on these so it's a bench dip as opposed to a dip where you'd use the two um basically kind of gymnastics bars and so back in the day i used to do this all the time and i don't know what happened i haven't done this in probably 10 years i used to love it it was a little bit more difficult you have to set some plates up on your legs so there's a bit of work to getting it in place but it's absolutely a great exercise i love the exercise i'm going to give it a b i think it's something that you can definitely incorporate you definitely feel it in the triceps um probably the hardest part is getting enough weight set up to do the exercise yeah, I'm going to give bench dips uh, an A minus for bench for, for tricep growth because of the fact that it is such a great compound movement. It's a good in between. If you can't quite do like, let's say bar dips quite yet, it's a great way to like 
titrate yourself up to that level. Also, it's a prize of a very unique angle for you to get a really good stretch at the bottom. So don't sleep on the stretch. Don't just do these here, right? Really look down into it, drop the chest a little bit, stretch, and then push through and open up the chest and squeeze. It provides a ton, a ton, a ton of tricep engagement. You can use a lot more weight. I'm not a huge fan of doing like super heavy, like things for your arms specifically for triceps and biceps, but triceps can, can handle a lot more load than biceps. So you can do, I do these with like, let's say a hundred pounds on my lap. I use a dumbbell and I'll get, I'll put even my feet up on an elevated surface so I can get even more stretch at the bottom. Six second negative. I pause on the stretch position at the bottom two to three seconds and then drive up and pot stretch on the uh, hold on the contracted position at the top for two to three seconds. The burn is like nothing else. Cool drop set. Have your friend use the weight when you're pretty much at failure, take the weight off, rip the weight and hit like eight to 10 faster reps. Literally you're going to want to jump out of your skin because the burn is that good. So definitely a great exercise. In my opinion, one of the best compound movements for triceps. It's crazy. I haven't done it in so long. Like I've never really seen anyone do them as of late. It's just something that's not become as popular. Cause that was an exercise you used to do all the time. And then lately I can't let, I remember the last time I've seen someone do this, like literally in the gym and never, no one's doing it, but it's a great exercise. Let's bring bench dips back guys. Cause they're actually a really good exercise compound. Yeah. Last one we have regular dips. So we are thinking about, you know, the, the regular gymnastic bars, obviously you have them in your gym, uh, usually more of a machine focus, but dips either weighted or body weight. What's your rating? I'm going to go with a B minus. Cause I feel like most people are going to get more chest out of it than triceps. Hard to really stand properly, stand upright to get the triceps involved. Most people are going to end up cheating with their chest. It can actually hurt your shoulders for some people. And it's a hard exercise to do your body with for a proper amount of reps, 10 reps, 15 reps with the proper time under tension. That's a lot. You have to be very, very, very strong. Um, so I'm going to give it a slightly lower rating. Yeah. I think I'm going to give these a B plus. Uh, I'm going to give dips a B plus for triceps. Just for those same points, you can use a lot of chest. You can use a lot of front delts. And you can even use lats out of the bottom of your rep. I think it can be done very well when done properly when you're focusing on your negative, really getting comfortable with that stretch at the bottom. So what I would suggest for you guys is a lot of people want to do this with like two 45 pound plates, cut that out, start by getting full range of motion. And the way to do this, actually use the assisted. So put some weight on there, pause on the stretch. It's going to help you open up your chest, your front delt and get more of that flexion in the elbow, that bend, you're going to get a lot more of that stretch in the tricep. So that would be my suggestion. And then work your way back to body weight. And then you can even do weighted, but I would just first, first focus on that tempo, that stretch. It's going to help open everything up. The only reason I don't give it an A is I think there's a better movement. If you guys have it in your gym, it's almost like a weighted like dip machine. So it's kind of an angled plate. Not, not all gyms have this, but it's almost like a push down, like almost a dip kind of push down machine where you can hold it here and drive through. I think that machine is terrific. And that's the machine I like the most, which I would give an A, <laughs> which I have bought being built out of the box right now, most likely. And so, yeah, I love the machines for dips like that. Not just a regular dipping like bar, but actual machine designed for that. I, I feel like they split how many decades of information research into making a machine that's designed for you. And it's ergonomically made just to make sure you've hit the triceps. You can put the yeah. pin up and down. I other, love it. Other than like tricep push down variants where I do like either drop sets or holds and burnouts, there's nothing, there's not many burns I get like that machine, with mm. that, that, tri that tricep dip machine. So you guys have that in your gym. Definitely use that. I'm going to give that one an A plus. Yeah. So, uh, All right. Hope you learned something. And don't forget, please go subscribe to Eric Janicki. You can follow him on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. He's hilarious, highly intelligent. Look at the size of this guy. So please go and check him out. Got to give him over a million followers. Check it out. Subscribe right now.